everyone. Welcome to the ALSD's first virtual panel. I'm Jared Frank, publisher at the ALSD. I'm going to have each panelist intro himself in a moment. But first, I really wanted to take an opportunity to personally thank all of our panelists and to thank all of you. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for motivating me to put on a clean shirt today, my second of the week. And uh, I even put on two for you. So that tells you today is a big day. Squared up my facial hair last night. Let me tell you, it had been a minute. Uh, Amanda can attest. She's been giving me crap for it for a couple of weeks. So these video calls can be very motivating in that way. So uh, thank you. Personal hygiene is very important, even during work at home. And uh, I predict Mrs. Frank thanks you as well. So um, in all seriousness, thank you. We're thrilled that you're taking a moment of your week to spend with the ALSD. Uh, we wouldn't be here without you. Like we've always said, this is your association. We are here to serve you. You don't need me to tell you that the world has obviously changed in a very short period of time. So we definitely want you to be aware. We are planning events like this, many more types of events like this, where you're gonna have plenty of opportunities to remain connected to your peers during this time. Um, in addition to virtual events, there are a couple of other areas of content that already exist that I did wanna take a moment to mention. I'm kind of try to go through this as quickly as possible. I know we wanna jump into the panel, but um, if you're not currently a subscriber of our YouTube channel, I definitely encourage you to find us on there, subscribe, click the notification bell, uh, get those alerts whenever we do upload our next video. I wanna call out that we recently published a series on Globe Life Field, produced before COVID-19 shut us down, but still relevant content nonetheless. Um, that building is gonna open at some point, and let me tell you guys, it's, it's freaking immaculate. It was such a pleasure to sit down with their team um, around this time last month, so please do check that out have a deep library of video content. I'm talking other venue tours, member tips, executive interviews, a host of other features. You can get lost on there in a hurry if, if you're not careful. Um, also wanna call your attention to what we're calling the ALSD Training Center. Just went live with that yesterday, as a matter of fact. So that is, that is fresh and ready for viewing. Uh, we enlisted many of the thought leaders and trainers and executive coaches, many that you're familiar with from ALSD conferences past and upcoming, and many of those folks that you bring in to your own offices for certain training sessions. So please do check that out. It's on ALSD.com. Did want to speak again very quickly to the conference. I'm sure you've all received the news. We are delaying this year's event, but delaying is totally different from canceling. We're not canceling but we are exploring dates for the fall and we're monitoring COVID-19 like everyone else. So um, we'll have, when we have those dates, we'll be enthusiastic and excited to announce those. And, and that'll be very soon. So please stay tuned. Um, we're, we're all dealing with this same uncertainty. Uh, that's probably as good a pivot as any into today's content. Um, this is just a starting point guys. Uh, I've afforded the panelists today a very large degree of freedom. We want to cover a lot, um, but at a high level, and I don't want you to hear that as, as fluff. We have actionable ideas prepared for you, uh, but we are casting a broad net today. We're going to talk about sales. We're going to talk about service. We're going to talk about leadership and do so across multiple leagues, multiple geographies, multiple market sizes, and um, when we talk about leadership, it's, it's managing staff and it's measuring um, or managing, pardon me, clients. So this is just a launch point. I encourage you to, to ask questions today and moving forward. There should be a Q&A function um, if you hover over the bottom of, of your screen. I'll get to those, as many of those um, as I can today. But please know that what I can promise you is if we don't answer your question today, that's what we're going to use to build the next round of content. Um, you know, this, this could potentially evolve into a, a weekly item, a weekly member benefit. 
um, for the near future and, and hopefully beyond. So please keep us informed of what your pain points and your challenges are. And that's how we're gonna create the next round of panelists. Okay, I um, think that's probably enough. It's, it's an unsettling time, no doubt, but at the same time, we're really energized. We're energized to help all of you make it to the other side of this. So um, let's kick it off. Let's hop into the panel. I'm gonna have, starting with, let's go, let's go Chris, then Ben, then Justin. Each of you just tell us who you are, title and team, just so anyone in the audience who might not know you can put a face with a voice with a name. So Chris, tell us who you are. Absolutely, thanks uh, Jared and everybody else from ALSD for setting this up today, really looking forward to it. Um, my name is Chris Bassano, I'm the Director of Premium Sales and Service for the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, anxiously awaiting the beginning of our 2020 season um, and uh, hopefully we do not have to wait too much longer for that. But again, looking forward to the discussion this afternoon, uh, looking forward to meeting people who are on this call today when ALSD does uh, reconvene hopefully later on in the fall. Hey everybody, Ben Brown here with the Atlanta Hawks, Director of Sweet Sales. I'm excited to share some things that we're doing with you all. Um, miss the AS ALSD family. I was looking forward to Dallas, but of course it's some uh, troubling times we're going through a unique situation and hopefully some of the things that we talk about today can help you guys uh, out with your staffs. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, Justin Petkus, Vice President of Sales and Service with the Sacramento Kings. I hope, trust that everybody's staying healthy and safe out there in your respective quarantining facilities. Uh, I'm excited to be able to, to share with you a little bit about what we're doing here in Sacramento, but also learn from the rest of the panel and from this group and really appreciate ALSD and, and Jared and Max and Amanda for putting this on. So looking forward to it. Thanks, Justin. And why don't we stay with you? First question. Um, you know, this came up on us so quick. And now that we're a few weeks in, uh, a lot of teams, two, maybe three weeks into their work at home scenario, I felt a good foundational question to, to launch from was just assess what the current attitude is from, from your staff. What's the mentality of your sales and service reps right now? And how are they dealing with the work at home setup? So I think that starts from the top down, from our executive leadership team, to me, to our, our managers and directors down in our staff. And I've told my, my leadership team multiple times, I couldn't be more impressed with the way they've approached this. And while we're all out there searching for answers and there aren't a lot of answers to a lot of the, the questions that we have, they've done a really good job in the face of adversity in keeping their teams engaged and challenging and encouraging their teams to come back better than ever. Uh, the thing that we've challenged our, our team with and I've challenged our leadership team with is, you know, I want us to be the most prepared, the most united when we come out of this thing. Because if, if we look back at this time and, and really didn't do anything to improve ourselves or better the situation, then we've, we've kind of wasted this opportunity. Um, I know we'll get more into to how we're using the time later, but I've just been extremely proud of them. Uh, that being said, I know they're all getting antsy and they want to start getting back to, to normal as quickly as possible. So helping them you know, manage through that and doing as much as we can to keep it you know, relative normal is something that, that we're working on every single day. Ben, same question to you. Could you take the temperature of your, your, your team, your staff? How are people feeling right now? Um, you know, if you asked me this three weeks ago, I would say I'm not sure. Everybody was uncertain about what was going on. We're still uncertain. But um, what we've been able to do and develop in these conversations and putting our reps first is the most important thing. We want to make sure that, you know, not only their you know, health is good, their mental health, their physical health, all these things they're being taken care of. So we're, we've been resources, reaching out one-on-ones, and I would say that everybody's itching to get back to reality. I've never had so many reps say I miss cold calling um, in my career, so I think that's uh, a good sign of, of where they're at. But we're, we're keeping busy, we're prepared, we're ready to go if this thing ends tomorrow, and I think that's the goal for us, and I think they're ready too. Chris, how are you communicating with your people? And I'm also interested in the frequency of those communications, the medium of that communication. 
uh, just what types of conversations are you having with your people right now? So we tried to keep uh, things as consistent as possible and as similar as possible to the month of February and previous when we, we didn't have this scenario on our plate. And so by that, I mean, continuing with weekly department meetings, be it just the premium department or the overall ticket department, individual one-on-ones um, are still, still occurring on a regular basis. So we tried to keep all those standing meetings in place to, to try and keep some normalcy um, to everybody's day. We have implemented some, some, um, some daily check-ins. I meet with uh, my premium team through uh, the Microsoft Teams app which has certainly become uh, in three weeks time a necessary item for me when I didn't even know it existed on March 1st. Um, but uh, each morning I get on, the, I get on Microsoft Teams with, with the premium group, as well as another set of uh, ticket directors. Um, and then weekly we're having an overall uh, ticket department meeting, like I said, um, through Teams and also using the Zoom app when we have some organizational calls. But we've tried to keep the communication as often and as, as frequent as we can so that we can keep things um, moving in a positive direction. Chris, were there other collaboration tools that you considered? And if so, why was Microsoft Teams the best option for you? Um, uh, no, not really. I, it was kind of the one that we, we had somebody on our uh, director team who'd had experience with teams before or at least knowledge of. Uh, and so when they brought that to the table, um, that was just the one we, we jumped in with, with both feet on. And I've been, uh, I've been really impressed with um, how teams lets, that lets you collaborate, right? There was, there was a scenario a week and a half ago where seven or eight of us were all uh, on a call together and we were editing the same document that we, the Reds were getting ready to send out and doing it in real time with each other. Um, and so those types of things have been really, really helpful when you can't just walk to the office next door or walk down the hallway. Ben, I believe the Hawks are also using Microsoft Teams. Any additional insights that you might add? No, I agree with Chris. It's a great tool. The ironic thing about it, we already had it. We just weren't using it. And this forced us to start implementing it. And now I can't imagine us not using it even when we're, uh, we're back in the office. I was making a joke with one of my coworkers this morning uh, who Microsoft Teams video called me. And I was like, we got to start using this you know, back in the office. I'm tired of walking to your office all the time across the sales floor. So uh, we're excited about doing that um, even when we get back in the office. So it's been great for us. Justin, you've been using these collaboration platforms, Zoom, Teams, et cetera, um, not only to communicate with staff, but to achieve some culture-related goals and just to bring a smile to people's faces. Would you mind sharing some of those stories? Yeah, so we were actually inspired by one of our uh, other teams here. One of my colleagues uh, had her squad actually do a version of MTV Cribs for a little bit of, of culture and fun. And so we stole a page out of their book and during one of our uh, all team virtual happy hours, I started with an episode of Cribs where uh, I grabbed my little two year old daughter and we gave a tour of our, our crib and our work from home space and just kind of had some fun with it and bring some, I think, you know, humanization to, to the party here. It's easy to try to keep things all hard charging toward goals, but I think during this time, it's more important than ever to, to be vulnerable and, and be okay you know, exposing our, ourselves to, to different things that maybe aren't as simple or weren't as simple before this. And I think we'll, we'll learn a ton of vulnerabilities coming out of this too. So I think having some fun and, and mixing that in is important. So we've done the virtual happy hours. We've done the MTV cribs. We've done uh, some, our managers have done some really fun exercises where we've had reps uh, drawing the story of what it's like to be a season ticket member and showcasing those for each other and showing off our art skills. So, I mean, we're, we're tapping in everything we can to try to bring out the creative side and bring out the human side in all of us during this challenging time. Justin, I, I love how you verbalize that. We're hard charging towards goals. That, when you work in this business, that's, that's just how you're wired. You know, you're aggressive, you're competitive, you, you're constantly trying to achieve. And uh, I want to pivot back to Ben. That's definitely a, a, a thread through to, to what we talked about um, previous to the call. And I'm really curious, how are you, how are you still moving forward? You know, with pace, not, I mean, this, this, this came along and everything kind of came to the screeching halt, but 
we have to keep moving and, and, and keep moving quickly. And how are you, how are you doing that? And then specifically, how are you keeping your reps hungry and motivated? They have so much uncertainty that, that they're facing right now. What's some of the management tools and tactics uh, that you're providing? Yeah, so we actually uh, launched the uh, Hawks University. It's been a thought of um, our director of ticket sales, John Adlers, for a while to launch in an off season where we're just continuing to grow and develop the reps. And it's through reading articles. It's through podcasts, TED Talks, webinars, trainings. Um, but we actually found the perfect platform once we were introduced to Microsoft Teams. And during this situation, uh, we have a quote that the best thing you can do for this organization right now is continue to develop and grow. Um, so of course, being in sales, we wanted to make it competitive. So we had this platform live on teams uh, with different channels. Um, like I mentioned, the articles and trainings, et cetera, even physical education actually. Um, and to, for we load up a lot of articles and podcasts in each channel. And then for the reps to get credit for it, they, read the article, complete the podcast, uh, complete the YouTube workout video, and then they comment on the post about what they thought about it. So now they're engaging with other teammates um, about what they learned, what they thought it, it meant, and uh, what they can take away from it. And then we're tracking as well. I think that's uh, where we were able to create some competition uh, to track the points. Um, so now we have leaders um, in a leaderboard that are getting recognized at the, the Monday morning meeting. And it's getting pretty competitive. Um, we had a 10 mile challenge this weekend. People were trying to hit that 10 mile run challenge, you know, by Tuesday. Um, when it comes to articles, you load up an article and then, you know, we have a guy who's getting 1200 points a week when the average is around 500. So uh, reps are starting to separate themselves through that. It's competitive, uh, but it's also continuing to get them better develop. So when we do return to normalcy, um, they're a lot better equipped and adding a lot of different things into their, their new business plans. And you also engaged with, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was like your play-by-play -play announcer for a really unique training. Uh, we kind of you know, take for granted, like talking into a camera isn't an easy thing to do. Frankly, it's pretty intimidating for a lot of people. So how did he help? Um, so yeah, Bob Rathman is our play-by-play -play announcer for the past 24 years. He is, he's great. And I encourage everybody, utilize your resources that you have within the organization. We're all in the same boat. We're, you know, not having games right now. So we asked Bob to do a training on talking into the camera. Um, and he led that training. He, uh, for all of our sales staff, as well as our corporate partnership staff, because if this keeps going on, um, we have to be proactive and start conducting virtual meetings. So he gave tips about, you know, what you should do in the background, uh, the lighting, um, even having an arrow pointing to the camera so you're reminded to talk into the camera and not uh, continue to look away. So uh, we got great feedback from it. We're actually looking to launch that for our members, uh, specifically our businesses, as they go through the same things we're going through and everything's virtual. How can we help our business members as well? Um, but I encourage everybody, utilize your resources um, that you have, you know, within the organization. How am I doing? Am I breaking any of the rules or tips that he, he set out? You know, I've, uh, I was looking and I was like, uh, you know, uh, but you know, we're all just trying to get better. Trust me, just keep practicing. Uh, maybe a couple of those tips um, will work out. I'll invite you to the training that we do with Bob later on. Yeah, so good enough for a first try. You're doing good. Yeah, awesome, thanks, Ben. All right, Chris. Um, we had a really nice conversation recently where you talked about this being the time to take things off the back burner. We all have projects, we all have things that we think will help the business and we're interested in and we're passionate about, but there just isn't time to address those. Well, now is the time. Now is when we have that, that opportunity afforded to us. Um, can you speak to that point? And then if you're willing to share any of those specific call them projects that you're considering right now, that your peers in the audience might want to consider as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right, uh, just as it was becoming a reality that we were going to spend some time working from home, you know, we were all asked to put together um, a list of things that um, we have been thinking about doing or started to do and never finished uh, over the last, you know, certain period of time. Um, and when we did, when we went through that exercise, it was just really interesting to, to find out all those things that when I look back on a year, um, you know, there was always one or two items that I thought, man, I really wish I would have found the time to do this, right? Um, and to be fair, um, I have uh, I have found myself to be to have been busier with day to day activities over the last three weeks, and I haven't gotten to these items yet. Um, but hopefully, uh, we can start getting some of those things on the front burner. Um, and there are examples, you know, um, one of my uh, one of the sweet service reps that I have, um, he is focused on you know doing a lot of social media um, prospecting let's let's say uh, of current clients right and so he's developing and adding into CRM uh, individual pictures of our suite owners and the suite administrators um, and developing one sheeters of historical information of a suite owners partnership with the Reds right began in 2003 they signed a contract that lasts this long uh, here are the other people that are involved in the decision making process, but getting those types of things to be easily accessible um, so that when we come back online and we're preparing to go to a renewal meeting, we don't have to do that research um, on the individuals that we're going to be meeting with. Um, so there's a lot of those, you know, um, one of the buzzwords around the Reds, and I think a lot of organizations these days is customer intimacy. And so continuing to build that uh, profile in our CRM of the people that we interact with on a daily basis and taking stuff out of our head that we know when we see somebody, oh, hey, there's Ben, he's got twin girls that are one years old, right? And now getting that into a CRM so that um, as people change positions, as people grow and, and move out of positions, we're gonna have that data and we don't have to start from ground zero every time. Justin, what do you want your coronavirus story to be? And why are you asking your staff that same question? So I, I got a picture sent to me from a mentor last week, and it was a picture that told a story about in the year 2030, a college age kid is talking to their parents and they're asking their parents, hey, today in school, we learned about the coronavirus pandemic. Sounds like it was pretty bad. Tell me what it was all about. And the parent proceeds to, to tell the kid, oh, it was crazy, the economy, uh, was sliding in a way we had never seen. People were hoarding things at the grocery store. They were telling them about all of these things that were happening. And then they turned it back to their kid and they said, you were eight years old when that happened. What, what do you remember? And the kid goes on to tell a story about it being one of the best parts of their life because they were building forts in the house and spending time every meal with mom and dad and so on and so forth. And, you know, regardless if you're a parent out there, it, it just really made me think like, that's the story that that kid in this in this example took away from it and so what's our story going to be if our story when we look back at this time is that we stayed stagnant and we just waited for it all to blow over you know maybe, maybe that's okay um, but i think that if we each take it upon ourselves to really think intentionally about what we want our story to be when ultimately we're asked for the rest of our lives you know how do we want to tell that story and so I, I encouraged our, our team to send what they want their story to be to their manager and then they're funneling those up actually by the end of business today. And then we're going to spend some time next week talking about that as a group. And my hope is that, you know, each person's story is going to be unique to them and we can share that with each other. And hopefully, you know, as Ben touched on, there might be some people that are, you know, at home and, and struggling with, with different things in their lives. And maybe those stories can help to inspire those people to do a little something more, do something a little different, a little something extra. So really that was the, the hope and the motivation with that. And also to, you know, hold myself accountable by having 50 people behind me also holding me accountable by, by thinking about what I want my story to be with my family and, and with them. So that was the inspiration behind kind of putting that question out in the ether. Such a great message there. Thank you for sharing that, Justin. Um, I, I know I've personally taken it as a challenge to give consideration to that and uh, definitely been thinking more intentionally about how I want to use my time 
and maximize my time uh, during this period. So really appreciate you sharing that. Let's, um, let's as, we're, as we're getting into the back half of the program here, let's, let's go into how we're communicating with premium clients. We've done a great job of talking about managing and communicating with staff. Um, we have customers we need to take care of as well. So Ben, let's start with you. Um, how are your reps communicating with premium clients? What are the touch points? What's the script? Yeah, I mean, I think the word that we're using every single day is empathy. Empathy, empathy, empathy. And we're making these wellness touches. And this could be to our current clients. This is our you know, prospects who we might have been very close to closing. But we're not running. You know, we're, we're being proactive. Um, we're making these touches. We're sharing some of the things that we're doing as an organization, especially in the B2B community, um, because it's all about sharing what's going on. We're all in the same boat. We're all in this together. And it's a light touch, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's an email, whether it's a text, if you built that relationship and say, hey, man, I want to make sure everything is going you know, well your way. I hope you and your family are safe first and foremost. Um, not sure if you got a chance to see what I'm not sure what you're currently doing, um, but, you know, for, for us, we're actually having these happy hours, you know, every Friday virtually, and it seems to be bringing everybody's spirits up and sharing a picture of our happy hours with our silly hats on. So it, it's a light touch, but we want to be able to be proactive in this situation. We, we're looking at going to the market for, um, for new prospects, but even if so, it's not going to be with the intent to sell, you know, it's, it's, it's maybe just um, adding a connection, liking a post, um, liking a comment or commenting on a post. Uh, right now it's about building familiarity with those prospects. Um, so maybe when this is over, you know, they're more willing to have a conversation because they recognize us. What are the logistics of these happy hours? Is this staff? Are you, you know, you're, you're inviting clients, you know, how do you, decide who gets invited, how do you invite them, what, what's the process there? Oh, well, the happy hours are staffs, um, but we are looking to have some virtual events coming up, which will be clients and, and prospects. Uh, some fun things, uh, maybe with our chef Joe, who is the, the head chef at the arena, doing a cooking class. So um, different things like that to invite our prospects and clients to. And I wanna stick with you for one more here, Ben, I know you've been working with your analytics crew to uncover some businesses, some industries that may be less impacted by COVID-19. And you know, we want to be empathetic and we want to be certainly respectful of, of everyone's uh, situation. But at the same time, you know, there might be some prospects out there that we can have conversations with. So how are you identifying those businesses and industries? And then what are those touch points? Yeah, Jared, it actually came from uh, one of our reps, um, Katie Ogdenfer, when she was uh, making these wellness touches, she found out that her client is actually thriving right now is there in the e-commerce. So it got us thinking to say, hey, like not everybody is, is um, you know, going out of business right now or struggling. Some people are actually excelling, like logistics, um, e-commerce. Um, apparently video games is very high. I'm sure Justin knows about that over there in California. But um, so from there, I went to the analytics team and said, hey, can we get a list of some of these hot industries right now, the industries that are trending up? And from there is creating a campaign and then creating a cadence. Um, but even then, you know, that cadence is, is very, the, the touch points are very soft. You know, they're very empathetic, um, not looking for a meeting, but just looking to engage um, and see how they're doing, you know, first off as a person, second off as a business. And if it made any sense um, to to have a conversation, um, so and, and then we also want to include some content in that as well. Um, that involves you know what's going on that we think could be interesting to them. Uh, so maybe uh, an article that includes their industry and you know how they are you know maybe excelling in this time or a feel good story in their industry. So. Um, Looking forward to, we're going to continue this over the next couple of weeks and looking forward to seeing what we can uncover doing that. Absolutely. Uh, Justin, I do want to pick your brain on this, this same topic. Uh, is your crew being more reactive? Are you being proactive in conducting outreach? You know, how are you building momentum without sounding tone deaf? 
So we spent our, we were obviously one of the teams that got shut down right before tip off. So we had a very unique situation on the night of March 11th. Uh, unfortunately, probably the most important game in Sacramento in the last 13 years. And we had the building packed and, you know, right before the, the tip was about to happen, we shut down. So obviously extremely sensitive to the folks that were impacted by that game. So we spent our first seven to 10 days, you know, being almost 100% reactive. And then we started some of the wellness touches that, that Ben and Chris have mentioned over the course of the last two weeks and making sure that, you know, we reach out with empathy and, and check in with our customers. Recently, uh, we just were approved to start a proactive outbound campaign. So we have a large premium wait list of folks that are trying to get into our contracted premium area. So we're gonna start combing through that list and re-engaging those folks over the next few weeks and hopefully calling with some good news that you know, the opportunity they've been waiting for for years is here if they'd like to take advantage of it. At the same time, we're going to go in soft. If they have, have no business talking about that right now, we're, we're obviously not going to get a hard push there. We're also going to start with our top handful of reps, uh, our most tenured reps, reaching out proactively to prospects uh, and start gauging the temperature there. And our play really is to, to start and, and take a wait and see approach. If it goes great out the gates, then we'll continue to potentially scale it. If we find that our reps are uncomfortable and our clients are uncomfortable based on the climate here in California, then we'll probably pause it again. So, you know, we're, we're sticking and moving more than we ever have before. We're gonna take it really day by day. Chris, you're in a slightly different boat in that you never started your season. And these guys got shut down in the midst of the season, whereas you haven't had a chance to have opening day yet. How does that impact the messaging, the offers to clients and prospects? What are you saying to clients right now? Yeah, you're right, Jared. It was, um, it was really tough, the, the timing of everything, right? We had spent the last five months um, planning and prepping for March 26th. We had some momentum behind our team. For the first time in a long time, you know, for those that aren't following baseball that closely, the Reds had gone out and made a bunch of free agent signings, which was atypical of how our organization has, has operated previously. And so there was a lot of, of positive feeling and momentum in Cincinnati and spring training was underway. People were players were staying healthy. And, and you know, we were just uh, two weeks away from from opening the season when the when the plug was pulled. So um it was a tough message. It was, it was a challenge at the beginning. And I think, um, you know, 50% plus or minus of our uh, ticket sales happen after opening day from a single game and group perspective. So um, we have really been focused with just keeping that open line of communication um, with season ticket members, suite owners, with uh, prospects that maybe we talked to in, in December or January that didn't pull the trigger on, on purchasing or, or joining. Um, so that when we get the uh, when we get the okay to um, to start plowing forward again, you know there hasn't been a, a too too long of a lag in communication uh, from our sales reps to the prospect and or client. Um, there is a little bit of traction relative to games in the second half of the season from a sales perspective, um, but even those are getting more challenging to talk about. You know. Um, closing a sale in for something in July, August, or September, the longer that we continue to, to wait. So um, like the others, it's been, um, uh, it's been an effort from our side of, side of things to keep things positive, uh, talk to our fans about who they were most excited to see on the field, talk about what they were most excited um, to, to do and or somewhere to be on opening day. So um, it's been, it's been really a challenge uh, to try and, and keep the momentum positive um, throughout everything that, that, uh, that we're going through right now. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, it is, it is a challenge. It's a challenge for all of us. Um, one question that I don't want to put words in the audience's mouth, but I imagine they're thinking is, and I would like all three of you to comment on this, starting with Chris, what is the Reds' current position on refunds? Are you just holding on, holding out for now, or offering incentives, offering credits for a future year? How are you guys handling that right now? Uh, currently, MLB's position as a whole is, um, is to not offer refunds. 
um, you know, we, we being MLB has, has publicly said that they're going to try to get as many games as they can in during the 2020 season. What that number looks like is still unknown. Um, and so at this point in time, until we get a really definitive direction from the league office on um, how many games are going to be played, when they're going to, when they're going to start, how they're going to be structured, because um, there's been a lot of conversations relative to um, adding double headers into the schedule, extending the schedule into October. Um, we just don't know what that's going to look like. And so until we get that direction right now, you know, we are asking reps to have those conversations when asked by clients. Um, if it is from a game that, you know, was prior to April 2nd, we're trying to move those to an account credit to be used for the 2020 season as it relates to groups and or, you know, larger single game purchases. Um, but then for everybody else, it's just kind of a wait and see until we get the direction from the league on how to proceed as it relates to our schedule. Are you sending out things like invoices? I mean, you have critical needs of your business that you need to fulfill, but again, you don't want to sound tone deaf at the same time. So what is that balance? Yeah, we do. Um, you know, I don't know that we've sent out invoices since we left the office, you know, middle of March. Um, but there were certainly a, a last round of invoices that went out, particularly to suite owners in, in the last part of February. And um, we're just kind of holding tight. You know, we're not asking our reps to go make those collection calls, so to speak, um, until we know what that what the status of the season looks like, how many games are going to be played, because then we can react to that in a variety of ways once we've got that um, specific number of games. If you come across a specific season ticket holder or, or suite owner company that they have literally been personally impacted by the virus, either they've lost a job or you know, either them or someone in their family has gotten sick. Uh, how are you handling that? Is that, I, I guess, I guess not giving refunds given that that's MLB policy, but if you do come across someone with personal, who is being personally impacted, how do you handle it? Yeah, and, again, and, and while that blanket policy has been no refunds from the Major League Baseball side, we are, uh, and each team is certainly having individual one-off conversations in those types of scenarios, right? Um, you know, restaurant or bar owners that have, you know, been closed down or businesses that just can't operate in the current environment, um, we're surfacing those up and, and have an approval process um, based on the, the size of account um, that could potentially go all the way up to the team president uh, relative to an approval. But we are working with, with people on an individual basis who are coming across those types of hardships. Ben, similar line of questioning for you. Let's start with just what your policy is. Are you providing refunds, thinking about credits? Uh, how is how are the Hawks looking at this situation from that point of view? Yeah, um, and I've talked to the ALSD fam as far as like we're doing Hawk, uh, concerts and Hawks games. Um, and, you know, every week that passes, one is getting postponed. Um, what we are doing is we're talking to our clients that they want to request a refund. We're not fighting back right now. We're, we're being very empathetic. We understand that there are millions losing their jobs every single week. And if this is something that they want to do, we're going to give them the refund. What we will do is we'll explain to them that the games are postponed. The concerts are being rescheduled. So if they do, you know, request a refund that, you know, unfortunately they will lose their seat. And we're advising them that if they can, if possible, um, and if they still are interested in the game or the concert, the best way to do that is to keep the money onto account. You will have that seat once the game is rescheduled, once the concert is, is rescheduled. Um, for that date. Um, but um, with all that is going on, we took the stance of saying, hey, we're not going to fight back refunds right now. Um, if somebody wants to defer payments, um, we're going to give them that option. Uh, but it, even in that script, we're still telling them that in our 12-month payment plan is, is one of the most beneficial um, benefits that we offer. And that by deferring your payments, it will create a larger monthly payment for you on the back end. So we're having these conversations. Um, people just want to, you know, talk, talk it out. The one thing they don't want is to not know what's going on. And we're finding that out, you know, found out in the first week. So um, we're, we're doing all the call campaigns. Our service and retention team has been um, tremendous during this whole thing. And the conversations that they're having, people are understanding. It's, it's not an NBA thing. It's not a sports thing. 
Um, you know, it's a global pandemic. And most of the times when we just have the conversations with them, unless a situation has, like you said, directly impacted them, like a, a job or like a business, um, they're willing to hold off and see where things go. Justin, would you echo some of the sentiments just mentioned or from the King's perspective, any additional color you'd like to provide on that topic? Yeah, very, very similar um, in terms of the way we're handling uh, from a customer perspective, but our approach with regard to refunds is, is a little different because we've unfortunately dealt with a situation where we've played in front of no or limited fans. Um, if anybody remembers the games that were shut down due to protest a couple of years ago uh, here in Sacramento. So with our experience with that, we, and what's going on in, in the state of California, we've had to be much more, much more empathetic to refunds. We've actually suspended payment plans for all season tickets. And so right now folks are not being charged unless they came over the top and said they would like to stay on the payment plan for the reason Ben mentioned that, you know, there's the likelihood that their payments are just going to get larger as time passes, although we haven't communicated exactly what that looks like yet. Um, so right now we're on a complete pause. Um, so that, that's been our philosophy uh, based on the situation going on in our specific state. Justin, I have an audience question and I'm going to funnel your way. Uh, question is, if NBA games are canceled or they're played without fans, has anyone established a plan yet to incentivize accounts to keep money on account and roll it into renewal for next season? Is that even necessary? So we've, we've talked about various plans here with in the, during the lockout time, I wasn't here with the team, but at the time the games were given a five or 10% surplus if rolled over to the next year. So what we would likely do in that scenario, again, no plans are finalized yet, is we would take the variable rate for each premium and non-premium season ticket. We would push that complete value plus a little extra to next season to incentivize people to keep credit on account versus letting all these games just drop off. Justin, I want to stick with you. We're getting close to the, the time we wanted to stay within. So before we, we run over time, you have a really unique partner uh, with a local grocery chain and you're leveraging that partnership, not only with, with sales, but then also with a relief effort with your part-time staff. And, I found that to be an incredible story, and I'm hoping you'd be able to share that with the community today. So one of our largest partners here locally is a local grocery chain uh, called Rayleigh's, and we partnered with them on two fronts. One is for relief of our, for our part-time workers that without any shows or concerts or things going on at the arena, obviously many of them are out of, out of full-time or part-time work, and so we were able to coordinate with Rayleigh's to hire them. Uh, and actually over 700 people got hired uh, to work for Ridley's based on the increased demand of essential items. You know, obviously grocery stores and larger chains like Costco and whatnot are, are being used like never before. And so that was very, very cool that they were able to give priority to our part-time workers to, to fulfill all of the need for those jobs. We've also done a similar partnership on the part-time employee front with Amazon here locally. Um, in terms of how we are looking to leverage the Rayleigh's relationship with our clients, when we start this outbound call campaign or outbound messaging campaign, we want to try to build in something that really does add some empathy and add some real value. And so we're working with Rayleigh's right now to create a discount voucher for the grocery store. So that way, when we reach out to our clients, I can say, you know, hey, Jared, we want to connect with you to maybe give you a welcome distraction and talk a little bit uh, of King's Hoops. Also, we know that right now essential items are more essential than ever. So we want to hook you up for being a season ticket member or a King's fan with a discount voucher to Rayleigh's, you know, to get whatever you might need for your family. So then that way, you know, you don't feel that from the salesperson and from the customer that awkwardness of, why are you calling me during this time? Is this really a priority right now? And how do you buffer that a little bit by adding some value and doing some good in the community? So we're close to, to launching that. We also actually just got confirmation from another partner, um, Coit Cleaning Services, who uh, right now is doing in-home sanitation 
and cleaning and they're offering their biggest discount ever at 55% off to our clients. So that'll be a cool one that we're going to be able to offer to our, our community as well. Okay, guys, one more question. Same question for the three of you. Let's start with Ben. Uh, I want to end here on, on a real positive note. I want to know how are you measuring success right now? And then what is your best success story from the current shutdown? Yeah, I think we're measuring success in a number of different ways. I talked about Hawks University and being able to see the growth and development. Um, but for me personally, I'm measuring success based on the conversations I'm having with my team. And I encourage everybody that these conversations that you're having with your reps um, shouldn't be fluff, you know, like you're one of the people who they're close with enough and hopefully they open up to you about that they can't talk to others about right now and hearing, you know, what they're going through. But then the success is that they're, they're motivated. You know, they, they want to um, contribute to the organization. They want to sell. Um, they're not taking this time lightly. I thought um, going into this I was like, oh man, like working from home, you know, how much is really going to get done? Um, so I would say like engaging the team and the stories that I'm hearing back. And honestly, we've kind of grown as a team during this time. It, it's created a unity and a bond that I don't think we had before. You know, we were too busy doing other stuff. Um, and now is, is a good time for us that we've been having connecting and going through the same thing all together personally. And I would say just the growth that we've been having as a team has, uh, has been the biz biggest success so far. Chris, same question. What does success look like to you and the Reds right now? You know, I think one uh, to kind of echo what Ben said, we weren't sure how the staff was going to react to this at the very beginning. And, and I can't tell you. Um, how proud not just I have been of my team, but how proud all the other directors have been of their teams through these first three weeks of, of this, because they've all really stepped up and, and done a lot. Um, and it's been really, really awesome to, to be a part of. And I think from our side of things, you know, you, one of the things I've always liked about sales is you've got that revenue figure at the end of the day, right? That says, hey, look at what I did. Um, and it's a really, really easy way to quantify success. And we don't have that right now. Um, and so we have to look deeper and we're, I'm, you know, while the metrics of how many outbound calls we're still making or clients we're touching via email is still great and, and provide some level of activity. Um, I would tell you the success from our side is the amount of feedback that we've received from our clients that when we reach out to them with a complete, completely human message, right? There is no sales tactic to it at all other than, Hey, this is a really, really strange time that we're in right now. How are you coping with it? Um, the feedback that we've got from our clients, the level of detail and understanding that we've been able to uncover relative to who these people are, what makes them tick has been really, really awesome. And, and to Ben's point, that's, we've always been after that, but when you're a rep and you're sitting in front of a computer screen with 300 some odd opportunities in front of you and you're trying to navigate what to do, and then you got inbound, you know, additional ticket requests or whatever type of servicing things that, that you're being asked to do on a regular basis. Like this has been a time where we haven't gotten that and we've been able to have a 25 minute phone call with a suite account and really start to learn about them and who they are. And to me, that's, that's been one of the bigger successes we've had that I think when we turn things back on, it's going to pay dividends. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Justin, land this plane for us, buddy. What's success look like to you? Yeah. Uh, in, in the word engagement is the word you've heard throughout the, the previous responses. Engagement is the most important thing right now. This is a time where in our lives that none of us have ever been through. It's, it's a moment in time that we will all look back on and tell stories on the rest of our lives. Uh, and I think engagement is, is the key. I think that the things that make me most proud and the things I measure success by are all the great stories that get funneled up to me from our leadership team where their reps are taking a proactive approach to trying to better themselves, but more importantly, to better each other. I, I think that's what's so cool about this is that we're all searching for answers and none of us have any of them and we're showing vulnerability and, and we're leaning on each other. And I think that's the, the coolest part of this whole thing. Uh, I think once we get into the office, we can start measuring other things in terms of how many projects we got done and, you know, how much better are we in, in X, Y, and Z. But right now we're, we're each trying to focus day by day and week by week and, and just 
unwavering and unconditional support for each other. So I think the engagement is the thing I'm measuring every day. Well, Ben, Chris, Justin, want to thank you again for your time. Thank you for everyone's attendance. Uh, that will conclude our discussion today. Again, another reminder, please do send your comments, question, feedback our way. You can email me personally, Jared, J-A-R-E-D, at ALSD.com. You can contact Max or Amanda as well, as many of you are, are friendly with them. Um, this is what we're passionate about. We're passionate about helping you. Um, so be well, be safe, be kind, and we'll see you next time.